In this demonstration, we will explore the laws of exponents. To begin, this is the anatomy of a power, where this x right here represents the base, so this represents the base, and this 3 represents the exponent. Let's start with expanding. Here we are asked to expand x to the power of 3 and bracket negative 2 to the power of 5. So to expand x to the power of 3, that means take your x, and given that this 3 is the exponent, that means we multiply the base in itself three times. So we have x times x times x. Now these dots represent multiply, but there are other ways to represent multiplication. And of course, these x's could have been any number. It could have been a 5, and in that case you would say 5 times 5 times 5. Here we have negative 2 in brackets to the power of 5. In this case, we would take our negative 2, our base, that represents our base, and we would multiply it in itself five times. And that would give us, well, let's do this together. These two will give us a positive number, that is positive 4. Positive 4 times a negative 2 would give us negative 8. And then negative 8 times negative 2 would give us positive 16. And then positive 16 times negative 2 is equal to negative 32. One rule of thumb is that if your base is a negative and your exponent is odd, then your answer will always end up negative. So for example, if this 5 were a 6, then your answer would be positive. The next thing we'll look at is multiplication. Now this is referred to as the product rule according to the laws of exponents. So in this case, if the bases are the same and they're being multiplied as shown in all three of these examples, you will keep the base the way it is, so I'm going to keep it as 5, and you add the exponents. So 2 plus 3 is 5, and that right there is your final answer. In this next example, we will start by multiplying the 5 and the 3. The 5 and the 3 is equal to 15. Then we would multiply the b. So we have two b's here. They're being multiplied. Negative 2 plus 3 gives us b to the power of 1. Remember, negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 1. Now, we don't write a 1 here because it's assumed that it's already 1 when it's not written. So let's erase it. And lastly, we have 2x to the power of negative 2 times 3x to the power of 5. We're going to start off by multiplying the 2 and the 3, and we end up with 6. And then the x's, we're going to add the exponents, and we end up with x to the power of positive 3. Now keep in mind that the exponent can also be negative. And if you end up with a negative exponent, that's fine. We will learn what to do with negative exponents later on in this video. Let's move on to division, and this is called the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says that if the bases are the same, you can keep the base the way it is and simply subtract the exponent. So here we have 3 minus 2, we end up with 1. So 4 to the power of 1 is simply equal to 4. If you end up with an exponent that's 1, just don't write it in. By convention, we assume that any variable or number has an exponent of 1 if it's not written. In our next example, we have 10a to the power of 5 divided by, that means divided by, 2a to the power of negative 3. So we're going to start off with the numbers, the 10 and the 2, which are referred to as our coefficients, and we end up with 5. And then here we have a to the power of 5 over a to the power of negative 3. So think of it this way, 5 minus negative 3. Remember the quotient rule, we subtract the exponents, so we're subtracting 5 from negative 3, and that gives us 8. So we have 5a to the power of 8. And then lastly, here we have 6 over 2, which is 3, and then h to the power of 30 over h to the power of negative 10. That gives us h to the power of 40. 30 minus negative 10 is like saying 30 plus 10, and that's 40. Our next rule is called the power of a power rule. Now in this case, if you have a term that has a power and then you are putting a power to that, you will multiply the exponents this time, multiply. So we have 5 with the power of 3 times 2, which is 6. Now you might get a situation like this where you have a term and it's all being powered. If you ever run into a situation like this, you can distribute the exponent to every component in the bracket. So we have 2 to the power of 5, which is 32, a to the power of 2 to the power of 5, which is a to the power of 10, and simply b to the power of 5. Now, this would not happen if you had a situation like this, where you had another term to the expression. Let's say that the other term is 5. You cannot distribute this 5 to the components anymore. It only works if what's inside the brackets is a single term. 
And in our final example, we have m to the power of 4 to the power of 3 to the power of 2. Now, once again, we're going to use the power of a power rule where we multiply 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24. Let's move on to the negative exponent law. In our first example, we have 5 to the power of negative 2. Another way to represent this is 1 over 5 to the power of positive 2. Essentially, what I did was I flipped this 5, got the reciprocal function 1 over 5, and then I flipped the sign, and that's all you do. So for example, if you had x to the power of negative 1, this would become 1 over x, and this 1, you would flip the sign, and you would have 1 over x to the power of 1, which is simply 1 over x. Let's try this next one. Notice that this whole term this time is set to the power of negative 3. What this means is that you're going to take this whole term, 1 over 2b to the power of 5, and then switch the sign down here, and you end up with 3 at the bottom. What you would do next is you would take this 3, as we did in one of the previous examples, and distribute to every component. Remember we did it up here? And we end up with 1 over 2 to the power of 3 is 8, b to the power of 5 to the power of 3 is b to the power of 15, and that would be your final answer. Let's try this one. Negative 2, x to the power of 3, all to the power of negative 2. So once again, we would do 1 over this, which was negative 2, x to the power of 3. Our exponent goes positive. Now we were going to distribute this 2 to all of the components in this term. Notice that this negative is its own component. That negative actually means negative 1. So you're going to distribute that 2 to that negative 1, this 2 to this 2, and this 2 to this x to the power of 3. So we end up with negative 1 to the power of 2. What's negative 1 to the power of 2? It's 1. 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. Remember that symbol means multiply. We're going to simplify this later on. And x to the power of 3 to the power of 2 is equal to x to the power of 6 which gives us 1 over 4x to the power of 6. Now, just one further example before we move on to that last rule. Let's take this example and let's switch it up a little bit. Let's say we had 2b to the power of 5 to the power of negative 3. Now, in a situation like this, your answer wouldn't be the same. Instead, what this expression is telling us is that this b to the power of 5 belongs exclusively to that negative 3. So in our case here, this 2 would have nothing to do with this negative 3. So you'd write out the 2 at the top, and at the bottom you'd have b to the power of 5 to the power of positive 3. And here you would end up with 2 over b to the power of 15. Notice the difference between the two answers. Now our last rule is called the zero exponent law, and what this tells us is that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So here we have negative 7 as our base, to the power of 0, and you end up with 1. Now this last one is tricky. Notice that this 0 belongs exclusively to the b. We would end up with 7, and b to the power of 0 is 1. So 7 times 1 is equal to simply 7. So there you have it. A quick breakdown of the exponent laws. Now keep in mind that all levels of math use algebra. And by knowing the laws of exponents, you will ultimately become a lot better at math. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, visit our website at studyforce.com. We're an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.